when you go out to buy a tripod, go and check some out and see what works for you because there are many, many, many of them on the market. The key with the tripod is stability. It's got to hold your camera nice and still and stable because if your camera moves during an exposure, chances are you're going to get a very wobbly picture. Now, I like heavy tripods. The heavier it is, the better as far as I'm concerned. This Manfrotto is made of aluminium and actually it's probably half the weight of the one that I carry around, even the light, lighter weight of my two. The reason I like heavy is because it keeps it well planted on the ground. You don't want your tripod to wobble. Look, if I stick that down there, put my hand on the top and look, it's next to no movement in that tripod. However, if you're not big and muscly like I am, you may find it to be a bit of a pain carrying a heavy tripod. Now, if you're a rough trouser wearing bloke who is a bit beefy, don't be a wimp carry the tripod because it'll make a difference. However, if you can't do that because you're of a smaller build and you want to do some serious climbing and you've got lots of lenses in your backpack, you could go for a carbon fibre tripod like this one. This is beautifully made and it's about half the weight of that one. You could strap that on your rucksack and you'd hardly know it was there. Price tag of this is about 280 quid. Don't take a sharp intake of breath because it really isn't a bad price. If you divide that over 20 years of use per day, that's a fractional tiny, tiny cost for getting some amazing pictures. If you do go for a carbon fibre, I mean, you could spend a bit more money and go for a real top-end professional one like this Gitzo here. It's beautifully made and it really will last you a lifetime. And it's even a bit lighter than the Manfrotto there. With the lightweight tripods, little tip for you hang your camera bag around the neck of it and let it dangle because the weight of spare lenses and extra bodies will add stability. If you've just climbed out to some interesting location and you're on heather or perhaps you're in the room of a house with a thick carpet, the tripod might be sturdy but it can still wobble because what's underneath it is a bit soft. Adding weight by hanging your camera bag around it will help stabilise it. Another little tip you can do is to use a cable release on your camera or the self-timer. If you prod the shutter while it's on wobbly sort of ground, you'll probably get a blurred picture because you've moved the camera as you fired the shutter. Another bit of support I want to just talk to you about briefly is a, is a monopod. Sorry guys, I'm squeezing through again. Here we go. Again, there are lots to choose from. Um, let's have a look at this one because as with everything, I like the beefier version. Now this is really, really lightweight and you can of course strap that onto your backpack and just leave it there because you might be out photographing and not have a tripod with you. If your tripod's in the boot of the car and you've got nothing, a uh, uh, monopod can certainly help you out. For me, monopods have one big disadvantage. Personally, I would rather carry the tripod up the side of a hill than use a monopod because if I've got my shot set up like this and the sun goes in, I might have to wait 20 minutes for it to come back out again. I can't lock my shot off and leave it because as soon as I walk away from the monopod, it's going to fall over, isn't it? To me, that's a bit pointless, I'm afraid. Now, the other part of the whole tripod camera stability thing is the head. Tripods come in two parts. You've got the legs and you've also got the head. Now, here's one over here. And it's worth taking a bit of a look at the tripod heads. You're going to spend about the same amount of money on a head as you probably will on the tripod itself. First thing to look for is a quick release plate. This one has one. You press that down, pull the little thing forward, and this little plate comes off. Now you can screw that into the bottom of your camera so it's permanently fixed there which is really, really useful because you're out taking a shot. This is what I do anyway. I'm often looking through the camera and lining it up. I'm taking a picture of you. I'm like this. And then I'll move my tripod in underneath the camera. And it's really easy just to put that on there and click your camera in place. Job done. You don't want to be fiddling around with thumb screws and stuff when you're trying to get the shot. Now, one man's passion is another man's poison. I'm not going to diss this tripod here because it's a beautifully made, incredibly brilliant piece of kit, but I don't like it. The reason is, it's a pan and tilt. You have to undo this to turn it that way. You have to undo that to tilt it in another direction and like that in another direction. But just because I don't like it doesn't mean to say it's no good. There are many people I know who love using a pan and tilt head. My preferred option is actually back around the other side. Come and have a look. 
Sorry guys, I keep getting in your way. I do apologise. Right. These are all called ball heads because, as you can see here, there is a ball as part of the, the tripod head. The reason I like them is they're quick. You just release the ball, you can put the camera in any position you like, and then lock it. As you can see, there's a little spirit level bubble here. This is really, really useful for making sure your camera is level. Very often if you're looking at a scene, you're not quite sure what the horizon's doing because if you've got hills going on and you're trying to line it up and you're not sure and then sometimes you find it's not right, you can't argue with the spirit level. Now you can mix and match legs and heads. Just because you have a Manfrotto tripod doesn't mean to say you have to use a Manfrotto head. I popped these two together earlier because these I, I really like these. This is a Giotto tripod, it's made of aluminium, and it's very, very sturdy. I like it, but I've mixed it with what is my absolute favorite tripod head. This is even more favorite than the one that I use, it's just I'm tight, so when the one I've got actually wears out, I will buy a new one. This is called a pistol grip tripod. You can see, on the top here, there's a pistol grip. I just squeeze it, line my camera up in any direction I want, anywhere, let go, and it's locked in place. How quick and simple is that? People say tripods slow you down. I say tripods slow you down. But it doesn't have to slow you down in the composition. It's the thought process and getting the shot right. This also has a little quick release on the top here. So you can very quickly and easily take your tripod, take your camera on and off the tripod. So just to recap on these, if you're going for a tripod, don't buy cheap. Make sure it's good and sturdy. This is an investment. Expect to spend at least £200 on a good tripod. You might be able to find something cheaper second hand. Go to a shop, try these things out because you have to find the thing that works for you. But above all, don't buy a wobbly tripod. If you're only thinking of spending 30 quid, forget it because it'll be completely useless. It'll wobble around, it'll just be hopeless. And if you don't believe what I have to say about this, check out these guys. On a windy day like this, a cheap tripod is going to wobble in the wind and create blurry pictures. So don't waste your money, invest in a good sturdy tripod. Of course, one of the most important things about buying a tripod and using a tripod is to actually slow you down, to really make you consider your composition, to help you frame your pictures so you can get your horizon straight and get the important things in the frame and, and the things you actually leave out are as important as the things you leave in. Now it's important not to buy a cheapie because the thing will just wobble around in the wind and you'll knock it and it will come out in your picture. So a decent tripod, strong legs, get yourself something like a ball and socket head, they're easy to use and you're well away.